Welcome back to Kettlebells and Cocktails. I'm your host, John, back with my bestie, Nikki. Nikki, how are you? I'm good tonight. How are you doing? Uh, I'm great. I had a fun time watching you kill bugs before we started here, so that was very exciting. <laughs> I moved bugs. I don't really no. have... I do, Yeah, I don't have the, um, the courage to allow the only thing separating me from a bug to be like a thin tissue. So, because I'm just, I just am afraid of bugs. I don't know. I'm just a grown ass woman who's afraid of bugs. So How I do you handle the chickens if you can't handle bugs? You have all those chickens. You know, we feed them dead bugs and it definitely took me like a hot second to be able to stick my hand into like a big thing of dried like dead mealworms and, and like flies and shit. But that seems to be easy for me. It's the live ones that freak me mm. out. Remember Usually the time I have we had to call in the mat reinforcements. Well, speaking of Matt, remember the time we had Danny on and it was right around the time that Matt had to stick his hand up to one of those chickens butts. It was a great a time. Finger. He stuck a finger up her not I was, butt. I was trying to be more polite, but thanks for just <laughs> rolling in there with that. And he had to like yeah. dip his finger in olive oil because she had an impacted egg. Oh yeah, I remember. I know. That's the best. <laughs> yeah. I want to find that episode and put it in the show notes so everybody can go back and listen because it was a funny story. It was a good one. Back in the day. Well, that we're just initiating Christy and Patrick into our foolishness. <laughs> <laughs> Christy and Patrick O'Connell, how are you guys doing? We're great. Enjoying this um, beautiful weather we've got today. Yeah. I know. I got outside and ran, and I wasn't going to. I, I, I'm going to be on. I'm going to put run in air quotes because it wasn't much of a run, but it was so pretty outside. I couldn't help it. I'm like, I have to get outside. Just oh, great. I love yeah. it. Yeah. Actually, mowed the grass yesterday, which, which was kind of crazy. I'm not even sure that it died this year. It's how mild our winter was. Um, nice. And today it was like all 70. Yeah. It was almost 70. We went on a three mile ruck with Milo, just enjoying the sunshine and smelling the fresh grass around the neighborhood. Was uh, I love it. Uh, how's things. my boy Milo doing? Milo doing good? Oh, he's good. He just got a haircut. He's fresh. He's ready for spring. Yeah, he's feeling good. <laughs> Nikki, have you, Nikki, have you been to CrossFit Polaris? You've been there, right? I don't think so. No. no. Milo is the coolest dog. Just run around, wagging that little nub, getting petted. Is he the, best. Is he the gym mascot? Yeah, he's one of them. So we had two. It was Milo and my mom had a bulldog named Mo. But Mo was pretty old. So she passed away a little bit ago. But we actually do have their portraits painted on a big storage unit right outside of our gym. So Mo and Milo hang out on the storage unit together, but yeah, he's great. He's been in there since he's been a puppy. So he's Aww. our, he's our greeter. Anybody who walks through the door, he's, he's running up to greet, but we've kind of learned the hard way too. Some people don't love or are afraid of dogs. So we've had don't to, trust those people. Do not trust yeah, those people. We've had to put on a, leash a couple of times. I'm like, Oh my gosh, it didn't even cross my mind. So yeah. <laughs> he, he's very far from intimidating, but he's yeah. always happy to go to the gym. He like shows up to the gym, like a, frat guy just like <laughs> life of the party like what's up goes around says hi to everybody and then he just kind of passes out until somebody else, somebody new shows up yeah amazing I, he's the mayor he's the mayor yeah. of your gym basically well, yeah <laughs> yeah he's super sweet great personality and like and it's an outsider looking in you know i've dropped in on your gym a couple of times and i mean this in the best possible way it's a little intimidating you have a it's a big space you have a lot of great athletes coaching's top notch and so and even when you're a veteran crossfitter it's a little stressful you know a little bit cuz you want to perform well like last time i walked in there dan bailey's doing the open i'm like i'm not working out today not going to happen <laughs> not going to watch just going to watch know? But but then you got Milo running around being the sweetest thing ever, and it calms you down a little. So it's a nice Dan's pretty nice too. And it's funny he lives like just by happenstance right down the road from us, so that's pretty cool. And like you've got elite athletes like that, but we've also got um, you know sixty year old athletes that still climb the ropes. Like we've got people from every ability and age level that absolutely get after it every day. It's pretty cool. Yeah, it's a it's a great gym, and, and it was funny. Like I I didn't know I'd see Dan there that day. Like we went in to do the open ourselves, so I knew like that was you know an anomaly to have someone like I don't know what the right term is. I was gonna say iconic, but I'm not sure CrossFit's been around long enough for anyone to be iconic. Like legendary. Le all right, legendary. Whatever. I think like, that both of those just make him feel old. We should come up with something. Better. He's an OG in the space. How about that? He's for an OG sure. in the space. Comparison for like how long CrossFit's been around and for how long yeah. Dan's been around, 
think he definitely qualifies as a legend. Yeah, it's honestly, it's so like we're just doing this. We're just like digging this hole for him being like, <laughs> I'm old. Know. We're old. <laughs> actually kind of funny i just sent him a picture the other day it was like of, of us seven years ago i feel like we just look like babies we we're like standing outside mm -hmm. the gym like, oh my gosh time flies but it mm -hmm. is pretty cool to have him pop in like he'll take our 8 a.m class like he'll do the crossfit open workout with our 8 a.m class and they love it like he just integrates right in he's um working out right next to him having a good time so it, it makes it pretty special tell me there are like there are like um maybe like older athletes or older people who don't really like don't really follow the sport professionally who kind of have no idea who he is who are just like oh dan like hmm, yeah. dan's back uh i mean people have gotten pretty familiar with dan i mean we've been i mean he's been in columbus for how long now it's been years at least yeah. seven or eight seven or eight years that he's been you know coming around the gym and we knew him before he lived here so they're pretty familiar with him and it's just you know he's you know kind of part of the community too so uh, the shock factor isn't is probably as prominent as maybe other places that he shows up to, which sure. I'm sure gets probably a little wild. I think the only shock factor is that he's like pretty pretty jacked when he comes into yeah, that. Only, yeah, yeah. He only gets he only gets more and more jacked as the years go on. <laughs> All the body well, he's aging he's like, in reverse. I'm so jealous. Yeah. Truly, Nikki, yeah. you cannot make this up. Like I'm watching him do the open. I, if I remember right, Christy was judging him, and he's doing the handstand push-ups. This was the last workout of the open. He's doing handstand push-ups, and he's resting on his head. He doesn't come off the wall. He literally is. At one point, he stuck his arm straight out in front of him, like took him off the floor and stretched him out so his shoulders could relax. But he stayed on his head and then strict pressed out. I'm like. Everything I've been taught about handstands, push-ups, I'm like, everything I've been taught, that's wrong. But he just makes it look so effortless. Oh, my they God. Me meanwhile, I do, like, yeah. one handstand push-up, and my head touches the floor, and then, like, I can't turn my neck for four <laughs> days. Like, He's got the trap to support it. Yeah, he had, his yeah. traps are okay. He's all right. <laughs> He's all right. Yes. You know, it's funny, truly, um, talking about this and talking about, like, I don't know, the shock, the shock factor or, like, the – famous person factor of someone like Dan dropping into your gym when you guys own the gym. Like you guys are legends in the space. Right. So I feel like the shock factor is like, oh yeah, the O'Connell's on this gym that we go to. Like that's enough. You're like, oh, we're in, we're with the in crowd. We like have games people here all the time, you know, NBD. They're, they're, our members, are, they're, they're proud, but they're also very used to seeing yeah, us. Yeah, they, they're like, oh, it's just, just Christine Pat. <laughs> like, mm -hmm. Well, they are again with their dog like yeah they they're just super used to seeing us and we take class with them every day we coach them every day like where pat's been painting the bathrooms we were there till like 10 o'clock last night hanging mirrors redoing floors like we're just in now all day long and so i think it's just if we're not there it's almost like well where are they <laughs> like, mm -hmm. what are they doing so, well, um, that's, that's kind of my question for you is um you know being a gym owner is hard and owning a gym like you guys own, like a really big one, big membership, busy area, even more so. And I mean, the, again, I've only been there a few times, but you guys are clearly incredibly passionate about CrossFit and running a great gym. Like, how did that come? How did that come to be for you guys that, that this became your, I don't know, like your mission? Um, you start? Yeah. Uh, honestly, slowly. It, <laughs> it kind of just has evolved to be honest and it's grown and we've got a great community and over the years we've got to learn what um what we can do to make that community better and a better experience for them a better experience for us and we feel like we've been we're kind of in like a sweet spot right now where uh, the community is great it's enjoyable to be there we've got a great format for running classes and it makes the coaching experience good for us and our coaches and we think that it makes a good experience for our members taking classes and the only like downsides, we don't have a great hangout area. Just we've pretty much taken up all the space in our gym. So it's really nice when the weather starts changing and we can open all the doors and kind of expand past just the gym walls because people do like hanging around as well. Uh, we've got two pickleball courts spray painted in the parking lot. So as soon as it's warm enough, they'll be out there playing all day and every day of the week, which is fun. And it just kind of brings more of a community atmosphere. Yeah, but and when he says slowly, like it, it kind of, when we moved up here, um, so we were 
part owners with our my parents at the time and now we own the gym and so it was interesting because he was remodeling houses and then it quickly became something that like we both were super passionate about and so it's not just like the competing had not really an effect there it was just really cool to have such a fun community and a cool place to work out because we also both love fitness but also the stories of changing like everything we were hearing for people is like uh just you know i can do this now my knees used to hurt doing this and it's just you start to evolve and you start to grow and then he slowly was like well we both kind of acknowledge like well what are you doing remodeling houses like let's let's go all in and let's do this together and that's kind of how the online stuff came about with ibex trading and then competing and then we just kind of went all in health and fitness and that's really what we're passionate about and we're excited about it and so it's just been over the years just kind of slowly growing and we love it does it feel think, like more or less work now that you're not actively competing? Uh, we're spread much less thin. And that feels good. <laughs> but, I mean, he, he, he took over so much of it when I was competing. And I mean, part of that was intentional. I mean, obviously, it's something nobody's going to compete forever. So we put things on our plate that we knew were some things we we're going to pursue after competing. But kind of juggling all those in the meantime, certainly, you know, is a lot, but it, you know, we're grateful that we did because now we kind of got more things to fall back on and jump right into after competing is over, which has made a very smooth and easy transition for yeah. both of us. But I think, you know, especially Christy. I, I feel like I just said this to me the other day. I was like, I didn't realize there were so many hours in a day. Like I, I get so much stuff done. Like what, where were all these hours? Like when I was training, like, I, I don't understand. Like I was always like, I literally like look at the time. I'm like, wait, it's only two o'clock. Like I don't understand. Um, and I've gotten all of this stuff done. So yeah, it's, it's just that we're spread a lot less thin and I'm just, am actually able to function, um, and think mm -hmm. through some stuff. Like, a lot of times you're just really tired and you don't realize like that you kind of eat, sleep and train and yeah. don't realize that maybe you're not functioning at full capacity, even though you feel like you are. So he was, thank goodness for him and keeping everything going when I was kind of in those moments. Yeah, that is really, that's really cool to hear. It's really interesting to hear too, Christy, because I feel like a lot of times when we chat with athletes, we know who have made that transition away from competition. There's a period of time where it's almost like an identity crisis. And there's a, you know, like, what am I if I'm not competing only because I've been doing it for so long and this is the lifestyle I know and I'm used to. And, and I can understand why that transition to I don't know, civilian life, regular, regular worker <laughs> outer life, um, would be, would be just, just difficult at times, like difficult to, to figure out what your purpose is in this moment. But I, it sounds like you've really found joy in that found joy in having more time and joy in being a little bit more relaxed and being able to pour yourself into your community. And that's, that's great to hear. Not, not everyone gets there so easily, you know? Yeah. I think you probably learned something on that. Yeah, I mean, I think that can be kind of a hard trap for athletes where maybe they're even ready to be done or it's not as fulfilling as it used to be, but it kind of becomes a trap where it's just kind of what you do. And then you get into the mm -hmm. season again, you kind of get going. And then, you know, when you it does take so much time and energy to put into competing at a high level, it's like, well, what am I going to put all this energy to if I'm not doing this? And I think that can be, you know, I'm sure a very scary feeling. Um, and we were fortunate enough to kind of you know, put some things in place to where we were, you know, ready to kind of just move in a different direction when that was when the time came and it wasn't we kind of avoided that stressful point. And it's certainly weird to make a decision like that and like to say either goodbye or close a chapter for anybody doing anything is, you know, a big deal, but it doesn't it doesn't have to be challenging. Though yeah. I'm sure for a lot of people it certainly is, whether it's competing or anything else in life. Yeah. And I, I think for us too, it was really interesting because I didn't start at 17 or 18. Um, I started at 25. I think I made my first games at 26. So I feel like I had like all of this life and all of this Christie before I became this CrossFit Games athlete. And so I feel like it wasn't my only identity. And we had a ton of fun. Like before I was, you know, I have to be in bed at this time. I have to do this. And we were always out doing other activities and doing other things. And so we have all of those hobbies. And then competing just became this little piece of our life that we love and wouldn't change for the world, but being ready and being okay with that shift and then being able to feel like I, like we weren't so focused on me anymore, but we could pour ourselves into others. It just, it was like you said, it's just refreshing. And so I think you have to know, and like, there was a lot that went into it. It wasn't just like on a whim, like, oh, I don't feel like doing this anymore. I think I'm done. Right. Uh, but we worked for 
years kind of building for when that time came that we would have something and that it, because I, I like to have a purpose and I like to have a goal and he's he's the same. And so it's something that we can continue doing together. So, yeah, it's been it's been super interesting, but um, yeah, it's been great. And we've got we actually will be down at the semifinals in Orlando because um, we've got a guy competing. So that's really cool. And we get to go Fun. be part of the school. And so just like I get to experience all the things and do stuff with our community and do stuff with Patrick that, you know, we haven't got to do. So uh, it, it'll be great. So I'm looking forward to all that. Who, who made semis? Was it the, the kid I watch work out on that Saturday? Yeah, our coach, our coach Alexander Majors. So he that made it. Is a beast. He is so strong. He's very fit. So He's strong. a very good individual. And we're excited to, to watch him compete this year. Yeah, so it'd be good. So cool. Nikki, this dude's got a beautiful Olympic lift. Like he got into the heavy snatches on that final workout and they were gorgeous. Like I absolutely you, gorgeous. I thought you were going to say beautiful long blonde hair. <laughs> he does, well, he has that too. He does have beautiful hair, you know. Oh, yeah. Man, I'm very I jealous. love a man bun. I just do. <laughs> I just do. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I'm curious, uh, I mean, obviously you get, you've been around the space for a while. You guys have seen a lot of gyms, you're running a gym. What do you, what are some of the differences between like what you guys have going on where you're a married couple and, and running this together than like my gym where I have partners, you know, bluntly, I don't have to listen to Jen if I don't want to, when she and I are getting into it, but you guys got to go home together. Like what, how's that dynamic work out for you guys? And I guess maybe even your members. Uh, I say that. What was that last part? Well, just like, what's that, what's the dynamic feel like comparatively, you know, for both, both for you guys, the ones experienced in it and, and your members. Um, I mean, honestly, it's, it's a positive thing for us. And I think that, you know, depending on the relationship dynamic that could be different for different people, but we get along really well and we enjoy being together. So, you know, most of our days are spent together. And for us, that's a good thing. Um, I don't know for everybody, that's the, the perfect <laughs> recipe, but it does work very well for us. Um, but yeah, I mean, we're, we're always, maybe the, the challenging part is just kind of actually breaking to where it's not always work because it's very easy for it to just kind of always revolve around something that's got to do with, um, some aspect of work in our life, but, uh, it, it's not a bad thing and we enjoy it. So it doesn't necessarily feel like it's just a constant business meeting. Um, I think I definitely agree. And I think, I mean, we definitely don't see eye to eye on everything, but we always get there if we don't like sometimes I'm super detail oriented and he's super big picture. And it's like, Pat, I need this detail. And he's like, this detail like does not matter. I'm like, I can't get past this detail. And so like, we do have those conversations and I'm almost like, how are you there? Like, what about these 10 steps to get there? And he's like, Chrissy, those 10 steps don't matter. So the fact that we think different, I actually think is a very positive thing. Um, but it's also, yeah, we do have some conversations, but we always end up getting there. But as for our members, it's, I'm, I'm not sure how your gym is, but um, we have so many couples, significant others, families. And I don't know if that's like, just because people want to do it with their significant other, if that's because we're there, my parents are there, my sister's there. And it's a really family based community. Like my second cousin's there, my other cousin's there. Like we've got a lot of family involved in that and his sister comes. And so I'm not sure for the members if that kind of just trickles down because we've had a lot of people start and then they bring their wives or maybe their wives started and they brought their husbands or their girlfriends or whatever it is. And then they'll bring their children. And so it's, it's a really big family based community. And I, so I think that they like having both personalities and we're also very different. So I think they get like just a lot of dynamic there. Uh, I, th I think a few things that have been really helpful for us is one, like having wh whatever you call it, like we do kind of like lane, they're very loose, but it seems to just give organization and make things seem a little bit more professional to where it's like easy to see what's going on. Everybody kind of comes in a little bit like a classroom. And then on top of that, like it, it makes it regular, but we have one set of rules for everybody. And what seems to sometimes make gyms challenging or have like challenges is when there's like the competitive athletes and then there's the gym members and the competitive athletes kind of want to do what they want to do. And then you're also trying to run structured classes where people are able to pay attention and get good coaching. And we've always run like from the top down, whatever rules we have for our members, we have those same rules for us. And as much as we want to foster the competitive athletes, like that comes second to coaching and like our coaches, our athletes take class if you want to do your own workouts, that's fine, but that is completely outside of class. And that goes for members who want to do their own thing. Like 
nothing takes away or distracts from class. I think that just builds the community and there's not like the irritating factors of like this person gets to do that, but that person doesn't. And like, I kind of want to do my own thing. And it just, it seems to bring everybody together and just like keep drama so low, which mm -hmm. in any sort of community-based business or anything is probably one of the bigger problems that can kind of arise. Yeah. I can't stand that <laughs> shit. That's probably my biggest pet peeve in in the box like it's on the ground like in the affiliates like that is i cannot stand when there is like a special super uber exclusive competitive track that is like in the middle of class or taking away from class i also cannot stand when there is like a quote unquote competitors class that certain people like only certain people are allowed into like that is some bullshit if you want yeah. to develop a competitors track competitive programming extra days accessory work whatever that shit has to be open to everyone it has to if you want even if you are like couch to 5k but you want to compete with the big dogs in 10 years and you want to come to the competitors class like amen yeah. the more the merrier bring it on like i just i abs i can't ugh. Ugh. i love hearing we love hearing that because that is the other thing is like i feel like but covid helped with that a little bit um, like we've always been like that way. And so for me, I always knew like, Hey, I got this training block. Like I gotta be done. My class comes in at three 30. Like I'm out of here. Like, cause I'm not it, like he said, top. And he was on me. He'd be like, looking at me in the corner. Like, are you, are you going to finish up that beast class? It's starting here in a second. And it, it is true. It's like, um, because everybody wants to get their workout in and everyone's workout is important. And it really does instead of tear the community kind of into different parts, it just builds everybody up. And so it's definitely yeah. something that we've seen and it's refreshing to hear you kind of agree with that in a way. Oh my so. God. I just, yeah. I've coached at a lot of different gyms. I've coached for 11 years now, maybe going on 12. Good Lord. I'm old. Um, <laughs> And that is like one pitfall that I have seen several gyms fall into over and over and over again. And I'm like, you're dividing your community. You're dividing your community. You are doing the one thing that could shatter your entire business model. It doesn't make sense. And for what? For ego. That's all it is. And it's not the reason or it's not intentional for this, but I think just kind of the byproduct is that it makes it easier for the community to support, support the athletes because it's yeah. not like that person annoying them during class or yeah. like what are they always doing like I can't hear the coach like they see them working hard or they see them taking class and it's like oh my gosh they're doing well and they're excited about it versus like irritated by that person that's always just like you know being loud or disruptive or whatever mm -hmm. or doing the thing that so you I felt like that, you weren't allowed to do exactly which like just doesn't make any sense like yeah why and that's been yeah it's just been good thing for us in the gym and making the community just like very low drama and everybody seemed to get along like really well yeah mm, i'm sure i'd be interested um nikki maybe on your perspective then uh, you know you guys mentioned that you've got a lot of couples and now i'm like running through my brain thinking of my own affiliates and i think how many couples do we have and i think we have a lot now that i'm mm -hmm. like kind of thinking about it and i'm wondering if that's a symptom of how crossfit has evolved over the last decade or is that you know neighborhood and coach specific because we're in kind of a similar neighborhood as you guys it's like it's you know the people that work and live there have you know kind of significant money so this is an easy expense for them but they want to be fit but they're bringing in their spouse and their kids you know there's there aren't a lot of like young singles i hate that part of my gym but there's no young <laughs> singles you know it's just it's um it's just different. Nikki, what's it like uh, at yours at Windrose? Oh my gosh. Yeah. Couples everywhere. I honestly, I think that I don't think that's a byproduct of anything other than the fact that so much of what we do snowballs into a lifestyle mm -hmm. that it's way easier to live this lifestyle when your partner is involved. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the sort of the crux of it. But I do think that specific to your gym, you guys, like you are absolutely like setting a good example as the figureheads of the gym. And I think that that probably helps. It helps people at least start to open the door in their minds. Like, oh, look, they do it together. How nice that they're here together and they spend that time together. I mean, Matt and I used to joke before we had a baby that like, <laughs> and, and I don't know how this even happened because like, it's kind of like when you were a competitive CrossFitter where I was like, I, 
I like feel every moment in every single day, like how in the hell am I going to make room for a baby ever? Like some, some shit's got to give, but we used to joke that like, we're so busy all the time that sometimes if we didn't work out together, like there would be huge most days of the week or chunks of the days of the week that we just like, weren't even hanging out because we go to work and then we have to do more work at home or we're cleaning the house and then we're going to bed so we can wake up early and do all over again. It's like, if we didn't have that hour at the gym together, that would be an hour less of like social decompressed time that we could spend together. And so I think having that snowball into just figuring out how to spend more time with your significant other in this lifestyle type thing that you like to do, it becomes your habit together, your hobby. Yeah, we, we've definitely got couples that sign up like together. And then I think largely what it's been is like the community that we've you know done our best to foster is then telling people and it's similar types of people that continue growing the community. But we've also had people that's like, it's taken years yeah. for them to get their significant other to come. Yeah. And then almost exclusively when they do, they end up really enjoying it. I think part of that's because they end up do meeting like friends and yeah. having that like yeah. social hour which it's like, oh, I was definitely missing this. But I think the other side of that is like fostering that type of community and being a little bit more structured with like the one set of rules for everybody isn't as appealing to the younger crowd that can be a little bit more disruptive or want to do their own thing. It's not that we like shy away from that, but there are other gyms in the community where it's a little bit more of a free-for-all and it seems to just kind of attract the younger crowd that likes that. And we're totally fine. Yeah, that, to we don't honest. care. Bye. We do have like, singles, if that's the word we want to use. But it also does crack me up because, like, listening to what you were saying, and I think we kind of do this. Like, it's almost like you guys work out, like, we'll work out together, but we also work out very, very separately. Like, one of somebody will come in this corner of the gym, and the other person goes all the way to the other corner <laughs> of the gym. <laughs> like, they that's bring, funny. They rock themselves. They can talk about it after, but like this is their time, and they are on opposite sides of the gym, which always makes me laugh too. No, I'm the opposite. So. I always I force Matt to be my partner for partner wads, <laughs> even though he's so much fitter than I am. I'm like, you gotta work out with me. I love you so much. That's oh, so Lord. funny. <laughs> we do like we do have young men. We've got teenagers. We've got the run yeah. of the gamut. But you know, they're coming to work out, and they like being part of class. Yeah. They like being a part of the community. It's fun. It's really John, fun. you need to go to these like anarchy gyms with the young singles who are. <laughs> no, no, I like structure. That's why I'm like I loving know. what they're like. I at, at my heart, yeah. You know, of course, I'm new to Sugar and Falls CrossFit, but like that's the thing. Like I'm trying to bring to the team there is like, hey, can we get really structured? Because I, th- mm-hmm. I think, and I could be wrong, but I, you know, I'm in corporate America. I think people crave structure. They crave it. They don't know they crave it, but they absolutely do. And there's nothing worse than going into an anarchy gym. That's what scares yeah, people off. Like there are, you will attract some people to, to that, but you know, who you're going to attract meatheads. Assholes. Oh, gonna, sorry. Yeah. That's what you were going to say. Yeah. Meatheads, meatheads and assholes. That's what you're going to get. You're going to get those guys <laughs> that want to do their own thing when the class is working out. And it's, it's, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, it's actually really interesting. We sent out a couple times a Google forum or whatever survey. And I was like, fully prepared because Pat was like, we're keeping the lanes. And I'm like, I don't know. Let's just let them tell us if they like them. I think out of everybody, I got like four votes to get rid of the lanes. And it was people that had been at the gym since like 2012 that just remember like old school, um, how it always had been. And then the other 99% of people voted to keep them. And I was just like mind blown. I could not believe it. I was like, well, there you go. The proof's in the pudding. Like they Explain. like the Explain. structure, they like the organization. Like we don't, we're not like, oh, stay in your lane. Like they'll all hang out and socialize. And then it's like time. And they like go to their spots. It's like, okay, cool. Yep. Like I can see everybody. <laughs> Okay, explain yeah. the lanes. Sorry, it's just like it's literally like la- like layouts, yeah, yeah. like three yeah. rows of barbells here or whatever. Yeah, I mean we're fortunate enough like the rig goes down the middle of our gym, and we're about a big long rectangle. So each you know lane is very loose, but it just gives enough structure to where everybody like spreads out evenly. Everybody has their own pull bar and their own rack, so it's ten feet wide by twenty feet long, and that is more than enough room that like. Everybody has their own rower, their own bike, their own box. There's a barbell stands between every set of lanes. There's weights in between every set of lanes. So like everything you have is, is like within what you need. Um, and that kind of t- also takes away like the stress or anxiety of like, oh, but I want that like pull up bar over there. Or like I'm thinking about that like kettlebell that I want or whatever. Like as far as coaching, people just pay attention because they're not like, fo- like they have what they need. 
it's just there. They're not trying to like migrate. Like I like this bike, but I want that pull up bar. It's like, you just kind of go to the spot that you want, the pull up bar that you like, the height that you want. And that was you know, the you biggest can just kind of pay attention. But I think the other thing that helps like on multiple fronts, just having like organization because it's a business also is like bringing people in. Like we do pretty extensive on ramp for people who don't have any CrossFit experience, but yes. coming into CrossFit, new, but you can kind of go along with what everybody else is doing. It's not like, I can't even tell what's going on. Like there's people everywhere. I can't tell what they're doing. Like you're just, everybody's kind of in a classroom setting and you can, it's much easier to like blend into the class mm -hmm. and same for like onboarding new coaches. Like there's a structure, there's a way that we do things. It's not just like, you know, controlled chaos that you're like starting from scratch every time you get like have a new coach or like you're starting something new. It's like, we want everyone to have their own personalities, but this is, is kind of the structure of how we run a class. This is how we do things like, and it's repeatable, but which, you know, is a good thing. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. The, uh, the only downside to the lanes, we do lanes too, by the way, love them, love them. Here's the only downside. There's only one people start treating those lanes like they're pew at church. And <laughs> if you're the new, they do. And you know who I'm talking about. You have members that do this because we do too. They come in and this is my lane and don't get in my lane, you know, because I've, I've been, vis I've visited those gyms that have those lanes and you get the stink eye, man, total side eye. If you get in somebody's lane and it's their lane. So I think we're somewhat for Like we got a few people that definitely have the lanes that they like that they like, but there's definitely enough other people who are like, I don't care that it doesn't seem to cause right. any problems. It's yeah, I know exactly what you know. Yeah, and I feel like those people lanes or not, those people have their preferred pull up bar or preferred corner sure. of the gym or preferred even if you don't have lanes, like you're gonna. Yeah. Luckily, I feel like those people who really really care usually get to the get to the class early enough that they like secure their spot without drama. And you know what? Good for them. Honestly, they like order. They like you know to to have their structure and they yeah. secure it for themselves, and that's good for them. Yeah. 100%. And like that hasn't caused us any issues, but I, I honestly think like looking back, like the couple times it's like a weird situation or something, it was more of an issue before the lanes because like somebody was by somebody's pull bar that they didn't know it was their pull bar. And then it's a little awkward when like the person who's like kind of claiming it's like wanting their territory back where like somebody's in the lane, it's just their lane. It's kind of obvious. So it's a little bit easier to kind of, you know, just do the regular and you, somebody just goes to another lane don't think twice about it yeah it's interesting i mean there's no perfect way but it does help i think do you have to does that mean you have to cap classes we do and that actually I was just talking to somebody about this last night uh some of our classes do get waitlist we'll let people come in and share so it's up to them to figure out how to make that work there's plenty of space like 10 by 20 is plenty big uh but there's people who do not want to share and then there's plenty of people who are like i'll take six people in my lane like i don't care we'll figure it out and so those people kind of know who each other are and so we're never going to be like oh no you can't have a spot like They'll come in, they'll share, but we do cap, which also holds so many people accountable because when those classes fill up, people want that class. Like they want that spot and they won't cancel where I think it's helped with our attendance for that reason, because it's kind of like that scarcity thing where it's like class is full and there's two people on the wait list. Like I'm, I'm claiming my spot in that class. So we cap at 18. We would love to see like 20 or 22, um, just with the way our facility is laid out. It's just not going to happen. But sometimes like I was in a 6 a.m. class and there was 28 people in there and it ran great because the people sharing knew exactly what they were doing and they worked it out between them. So it wasn't a disruption or anything. So we can fit more yeah. people in it's just we have 18 spots. Got it. That's that's still great. A great amount, like you said. But I do love like a like a random weekday class that ends up being huge. It's just fun <laughs> every so often. It's like, hell yeah, there's 30 people here. Let's figure it the fuck out. Yeah. yeah. And like for us, what it, it's been it works well where like 18 is a pretty good number to like give everybody an appropriate amount of coaching. Uh, there's no like equipment stuff that's weird. Like nobody has to share anything. And then also like, we don't want the expectation. Like if somebody wants to come share with a friend or whatever, and they're cool with that, they know what's going on. They know how to do that, but not to have the expectation that like, if somebody just wants to come in and do their own workout, that they're not going to be like having to share if that's not what they're wanting to do. So it kind of works itself out for the most part. Yeah. yeah, we do on our Saturdays, we do um, two people per lane uh, and we do 32 people. So 
that we can go up to 36. So we do that every Saturday morning. So, and honestly, after their Saturday, it's, it's literally, I coached both of them last week and it's like, it's kind of chaos, but they love it. But like that one dose for that weekend is enough for them. And then they go back to their calm yeah. environment for the rest of the week. But the people who love the chaos, like they love Saturdays. I and then do. Sunday, I love also that. Like that. So those are our weekend classes. We just open them up and they figure it out. And sometimes you're like, oh gosh, how is this going to go? But it works out. It always works out. There's a there's a fine line, right, in this in this sort of push we have for community and and how involved we are in each other's lives and how much we love the family that is all things CrossFit. There's a fine line to walk between that and like just providing someone the fitness experience that you know they need in their life to live a healthier life. And like not everyone wants to play a team sport and wants to do partner wads and wants to, I don't understand those people, but I know that they're out there. And so like as a, as an owner, as a coach, as a whatever, like you really got to play this delicate game. It's a dance of trying to figure out like, how much do you push? How much do you let someone just, you know, you step back and you let them do their thing. How much do you encourage them to sign up for the open? How much do you just like allow them to scale their workouts when they want to? And you know, this is, they're just kind of like here to move and then they're going to go home and that's all they want from you. And they're also a paying member. Like it, yeah. it's just a, I feel like we do, it's, it's tough. It's, it's a little bit of a, of a dance to do for sure. Our, our kind of like motto or like the thing that we try to focus on and you can apply, it applies to everybody differently, but it's like most people get one hour a day to work out. So like we want everybody who comes in the gym for that hour to be the most enjoyable hour of their day and then for them to feel like they got a great workout when they left. So we try to not jam pack, but we make a full class where there's not a lot of waiting around, like you're moving the entire class and to make it enjoyable. Like that's the priority. And if that means you're scaling the weights or just using a barbell or whatever for the day, cool. If you leave happy and sweaty, like that's awesome. Yeah. And then you do, yeah. you do know the people that like they want to be pushed. And so we kind of fig you figure those people out over time. Um, but yeah, it is interesting. It's definitely a fine line. And so you gotta, you gotta know your, know your audience and learn your community as you go, which is something that I think our coaches have done a really great job with. So how many good. coaches do you guys have? We have nine, including us nice. two. Yes. We, we do what we can to rotate them as well. So it's not like it may be working in blocks a little bit depending on people's schedules, but it's not like every day you come up at you know, 915 class, you know, the exact same coach. We try to rotate through to where one of the coaches gets to kind of know all the members. And then also like the members get a different experience with different coaches. Um, obviously people resonate differently with different people. So it just gives an opportunity to either maybe get a different coaching cue or somebody that you just may resonate with better than somebody else. That's cool. I like that. You know, I, I feel like I've dropped down on a lot of gems over the last couple of years. And the thing that I really love about Polaris is you guys have a real, you have a, it's a real OG vibe, you know, like original and it feels like CrossFit. It feels like, like nothing's watered down. It's actual CrossFit, but you've evolved to where CrossFit is now which I think is really interesting because a lot of gyms haven't. They either stay in that real OG vibe and they're still trying to make people puke before they go home or or they've watered it down so much it's not even CrossFit anymore. It's like some other weird F45 or whatever they want to call it. You know, How have oh, you gosh. delivered? Well, oh, go ahead. Go on, sorry. I was oh, going to say. say how, yeah, have you deliberately yeah, done that? Ahead. It's such a it's such a – incredible way to be able to do that, to, to stay true to your purpose. You take this one to start. <laughs> um, so, I mean, part of that has been a learning experience yeah. and it's been years in the making, but I do feel like we found a pretty sweet spot where uh, one, we are constantly like every single day, I'm always asking the members how they're feeling, like how you guys feeling this week. Um, and, you know, we're trying to dial in and tailor the programming to where it's not like I'm so wrecked or I'm so beat up or this hurts. And we've gotten to a point where we have extremely low, if any, injury rate, which is a definite plus. And people absolutely want hard workouts and kind of formulating those to where they're not beat downs, but they're challenging. And I think we've had, you know, we've been fortunate enough to have a lot of experience training at a high level and to be able to take the, the kind of the, not for, the things that we've learned from training at a high level where you're pushing fitness, you're pushing strength, and then apply those in a way where they're not training for the games, but, you know, 
the techniques and approaches can still be applied to a class format or maybe they don't even realize they're doing it, but they're pushing their fitness without it just being a beat down. And also just trying to keep people healthy. We do an incredible amount of accessory work. We do a lot of bodybuilding, but we also do hard workouts. And the combination seems to keep people um, getting fitter, getting stronger and staying healthy, which is always the goal. Yeah. And I think our, we take class, so we do it. Um, and so we'll know kind of how we feel, how they're feeling, the people next to us, but we get a lot of feedback from our coaches and just basically everybody in general, like they are not afraid to tell us if the week has been way too easy. They're not afraid to tell us if the week has been hard. They, the big joke is I'm like, all right, we're going to challenge them. And we know which ones are the harder workouts. And all of a sudden it's like, whoa, every class is full. Like they like the hard stuff. Uh, so we want to stick with the CrossFit roots, but also look at all the different types of methodologies on how to keep people healthier, incorporating all the strict work. And then it's funny because we got an email the other night, like I haven't even been doing uh, butterfly chest bar. And I've, I'm like, I was able to do sets of 12 in my workout and it's, but we've been doing a shit ton of strict pulling, right? So their shoulders are getting stronger and they're doing all of these things that are going to make that easier. They just don't necessarily like it's disguised. Um, and so just kind of getting the hang of that. And so essentially like literally the way that we've trained ourselves and kind of taken that and adjusted it, but you kind of figure out what makes you feel good, what works, what gets people results and keeps them healthy. Cause a lot of them like to come Monday through Friday. And we program with that in mind. Like we don't want to program so much on Monday. They feel like they can't come on Tuesday because we have a huge group that comes five days in a row. And when we program, like that's how we spread the week out that somebody can do that. And so it's, it's definitely, we don't always get it right, but we, we, you know, we try to adjust when we feel like maybe we could have done something better and we try to learn from it every time. We, we do a lot of interval. We do a lot of rest and repeat, but the important part, especially for the community in CrossFit, so you find a way to score it, which is important. Yeah. Uh, so it doesn't feel as much like training. It still feels like a CrossFit workout. Um, and uh, again, like Chrissy said, we actually do it with them. We do the programming also. So being in touch with it and it seems like a lot of gym owners, especially over the years, they kind of stop doing it and they're maybe a little bit more out of touch with you know, what it actually is or what it actually feels like. And that can be, I think there can be a little bit of a disconnect there. And we always want, like, we want them to look at it and go, oh, that looks fun. I want to go today. And you all, everybody knows the workouts. Like you look at it and you're like, eh, or like I could take it or leave it. So, you know, making it look like something that, you know, yeah. I want to go to class. Yeah. So, and then the most recent thing we added, like the level one RX, RX class, really it's like one, two, and three, but we don't have separate classes everybody does the same thing you we write a baseline and you either scale down or you modify up um, to get whatever's good workout and that also builds the community we don't have a you have to have these skills to be able to take this l2 class like we don't do that we write one workout i do the same workout as my mom right next to me and we may have different weights we may have some different movements but we all do it together and that is something that we are like we really like to stick with and we definitely are writing for the bulk of the gym and to be able to do rx or as written and then people can scale up from that that's like our goal not vice versa that was a lot that's, that's <laughs> an interesting concept because most uh, most gyms i think go the opposite direction they want to they make their rx and then you have to scale down like there's nothing about like their rx is too heavy that's the complaint you know or just or too difficult for the average crossfitter so it's interesting that you've kind of got this opposite uh tact and i love it like, how'd you is this just from years of experience or or how'd you come across it uh yeah it's and it's kind of finding a sweet spot and honestly like it doesn't have to be complicated and it doesn't have to be heavy to be hard and you know a lot of the most challenging workouts can be hard for the person who the weight maybe feels moderate or even a little bit heavy to the, it feels light um it, it doesn't take a heavy weight to make a hard workout and when everybody can be working at a similar perceived effort on a same similar or same workout, like then we've accomplished our goal. So I don't think that you need to do high skill or you don't need to do high um, heavy weight for it to be a hard workout for even the most elite crossfitters or fitness enthusiasts. Yeah, but I do, I, I think experience, I wouldn't say we've necessarily always done it that way. I think, I do think like the thing that we've learned very quickly is that a lot of people want to click that RX button and we want to find ways to challenge them to do so. So it's not just, oh, everyone can do RX. Like it's still a very challenging thing. And then we can take that whichever direction we want to. But I think like sometimes going super heavy, like you were saying, like that 
we notice more injuries and things like that because people are not caring about their form. They just want to click that RX button and hit that weight or whatever it is. And so having different levels kind of helps them. Um, but I would say it's what we've learned over time. And I think maybe kind of an example or just an example format for that where everybody gets a very similar like stimulus out of a workout would be we'll do a lot of like say three minutes of work, one minute of rest. And in that three minutes of work, you got a task that you need to accomplish. And then maybe it'll be AMRAP row or AMRAP something in the remainder of that three minutes. So the most elite, maybe they'll get a full minute or 90 seconds of work on the rower. And then the most of the class are maybe getting between 30 and 45 seconds of time on the rower. It's where they all are getting a very hard workout, but they're all doing the exact same thing. It's just the more elite get further on their calories on the rower and the people who are, you know, the average gym goers don't get quite as much, but they're doing the exact same workout, putting forth the exact same amount of effort. You guys have perfectly described, and I, I hope their gym owners listening that have picked up on this perfectly described how to keep an injury rate at virtually zero. By, by focusing on uh, what my buddy Ben would call the lead domino, but strict movements. So instead of people doing butterfly pull-ups all day, you're doing strict pulling. So when you do butterfly pull-ups, they're not blowing their shoulders out. Instead of programming heavy, you program an RX that's achievable, and then you can scale up if you have the ability, which is, I think, mm -hmm. a huge thing to keep people from letting their egos run amok, and, 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 which is where they injure themselves. And then you guys do the workout yourself. As elite athletes, that's important to do the workout so you can go, ooh, maybe I shouldn't have Susie Grandma over here doing this or or Johnny Grandpa doing this. I need to change that uh, workout a little. So I think it's brilliant, like end to end. Um, you know, and I think all of that combined, you said it right at the top, makes it more fun. Like there's nothing worse than leaving the gym and your shoulder hurts. Nothing yeah. worse, you know. Or, or feeling defeated. Like it's yeah. not even attainable. Like I remember one of our members, she dropped in somewhere and she came back and it was like a deadlift weight that was like, I think for the women, it was like 305 or something. Like it was something that I was like, wait, hold on, what? Like that was the RX weight. And so it's like that paired with handstand walking where you get your average gym goer and like, that's not even something that's attainable for a lot of people or they have no interest in even yeah. getting there. So you want to make it to where it is challenging and there's things to strive for and goals to work on, but you also want to make it to where you don't feel defeated, but you feel empowered and you feel accomplished. And so we're constantly, when we write programming, it's really fun because like I said, at the start, we think very differently. So it'll go through a couple revisions because we both focus on very different things. And so I think that also really helps us is it rarely ever just goes through one set of eyes before it gets put into the system. Like we're reviewing, editing, changing, making sure, like looking at the whole week and the big picture. And so our goal is keep it people injury free, happy, healthy, and getting the results that they want. Well, you also so, mentioned you, you guys are using your, the entire hour. And I think um, that's such an underutilized piece that most gyms aren't like if you're using the whole hour that I'm, taking an assumption here, but I'm pretty sure I'm right. It forces mobility work, um, you know, better warm ups, better cool downs, which again, prevents injury. But I think you give people the full hour experience. You don't feel like you just got cheated. You know, like you go work for a full hour, you're exhausted. You're like, man, that was money well spent as opposed and to, I just had a, you know, five, five to seven minute Fran and that's it. That's the whole day. <laughs> you know, like we, yeah, people lose their minds if, if we started yeah. doing that. Uh, but the lanes also make that easy. Yeah. Like people come in, it's organized and be able to start class exactly on time is very easy. And to get them through in that hour, you're not like wrangling people to like one side of the gym or the other. Um, it's definitely helped that aspect to where we can take full advantage of the entire hour. Yeah. And then we always throw in an extra credit piece. So say you finish 10 minutes early, like every day has some sort of extra credit bodybuilding, which is usually strict. Sometimes it's running or cardio intervals. So whether, which we usually use the full hour, but people who want maybe 15 or 20 minutes, so they can go 60 to 80 minutes. Um, and if they can do that off to the side or whatever, like however they can fit that in, as long as it is not distracting the class, like, or, you know, if they have dumbbells at their house and they want to do it later, whatever, um, there's always definitely enough for everybody. I feel like. So that is something we got a lot of really great feedback on. If it's a 12, 15 class and they, you know, have a longer lunch hour and we don't have a class right after a lot of those people stay after and hit some extra bodybuilding. So it just kind of fits the people that want it and the people who have no interest. They're like, okay, peace. I did my workout. I'm out. <laughs> like, I'm out of here. So it's good. There, yeah. We have a lot of members that like doing 
credit. And then it also like, since we're programming, it also fits in with the week. So we've had a lot of people that were like, well, I would do other stuff, but I don't know what we're doing tomorrow or the next day. So they don't want to double up on stuff. So they're like, oh, well, I know this isn't going to show up tomorrow because we wrote it. They're much more apt to do some extra work once class is over. Yeah. Yeah. It's fun. It's, it's always fine tuning. You're always learning. Like there's constant changes, but um, we feel like we got a pretty good system going right now. So we enjoy it. And I think everybody else does too. For sure. Right. One thing that I really love with you guys, just super high level is that you are owners that are just so fully ingrained and involved in the community. And I feel like that is something that is kind of a necessity in our space. And it's tough, right? Because like I own a business and I don't want to own this business and grind 24 seven for years and years and years to come. Like someday I would like to hire people under me to run my shit. And I just sit back and make money. Like that is the business model that I want. And so I understand how, especially as the sport gets older and as people have been owning gyms for longer and longer, we're finding owners that get great GMs in place and, and other, you know, coaching staff to run their gyms. And then they kind of just kind of sit back or whatever. But I, I think it's hard. I think that's tough in our type of community. I think that people within the gym, they want to see you, they want to touch you and have you accessible to them. And it's just, it's just different. It's just a different business model than a lot of other organizations and affiliates and, and all that stuff. So it just is really nice to see because I, I personally think it's important and that makes it tough, like zero shade to gym owners listening who have taken a step back or who want to take a step back in the future. Like I get it. I want to do it too with my business, but I just think it's tough. And I think that finding a way to ingrain yourself in the community, even if you have taken a step back, like someday down the ra down the line, and you can sit back and make your millions from your gym, LOL. Um, that will be that will be great for you, but I bet you anything, you guys will still be visible to your members. I think that's important in our, yeah. I don't know, in our community. It absolutely is. Like we have worked really hard to foster the community that we've got. And because of that, it becomes a little bit more self-sustaining in the sense that like they, the community is encouraging of like somebody new who comes to the gym, like they're friendly. Uh, like they take a lot of pride in the gym also, but they, I think it definitely is important for them to see us around the gym. Like we put a lot into it. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, Chris was saying like, we're remodeling the bathrooms or just finished remodeling the bathrooms. We're getting ready to repaint, redoing the floors. So like when they see stuff coming, like every year we buy new equipment, they see like you putting energy back into the gym. It helps them stay excited about it also in the, to see mm -hmm. that you care also. Yeah. <laughs> It's not forgotten. Yeah. Which we do. And honestly, yeah. like the funny thing is Chrissy and I are kind of like, we're pretty introverted. Like yeah. we're totally fine being uh, home by ourselves. And even like our social hour, like we'll go out to eat or something, but we'll go like early and it'll just be us. Like <laughs> we don't even socialize. We're kind of our social outlet. Ooh, you guys are ready for kids. That's, that's it. You guys are ready. The 4 p.m. dinner is like my favorite thing in the world. 4 p.m. dinner, 7.30 bedtime, and we're like home and like not out anymore. I love it. It's my favorite. Great. Yeah. Great. Well, you get good service. Yeah. Yeah. But again, like the gyms are like, it's exciting. Like people are excited to see us. We're excited to see them. So it's like our social outlet as well. Yeah. Yeah. And it's great to have a There's no nothing wrong with a sensible dinner before five o'clock. I, I love it. <laughs> I love it. That's also why I love day drinking. Cause then I can just be in my bed at, <laughs> at bedtime. Like I'm not staying up until midnight drinking anymore. Poof. Are you kidding me? I, I did want to start. A... I want to circle back to something, Nikki though. Cause you alluded to the fact that I'm not going to make millions owning this gym that I own. And I'm, I'm, I'm feeling a little disappointed all the time. Well, just... no, I would just, <laughs> I'm just trying to say that like, like, Anyone who who like starts a business at some point probably does not want to grind in that business every single day of their lives for the rest of their lives. Like I'm trying to say like, and I do hope that both of your gyms are so successful someday that you can just sit back and collect mm -hmm. and that will be awesome. I want sure. that for you guys. Yeah, but in a way, right, collect, air quotes, because yes. it's a gym. <laughs> but in a way, like I'm sure that even at that point, you guys will find a way to still become a part of your community. Mm -hmm. And I think that's where it's tough for us is like, claiming that we're in this CrossFit family, right? That is like worldwide and we're all in it together and we're all bleh, whatever. But then you have like an absentee owner or like a totally 
silent owner. Like if that's the case and that's your business model, then like maybe don't introduce that person to your community because like once they're there and then they're gone, then it feels strange. But so if you're, I don't know. And that's again, tough to say because people want to sit back and relax and reap the benefits of all their hard work. So I respect that too, but it's just a little bit like, I don't know, there's a tactful way to do it. You know what I mean? Or there's a tactful way to exit on that route without yeah. just being like, peace, I sold the gym, you know? No, I look, know. I, totally gyms right. have to have a, they have to have a very visible owner, you know, I think someone, so. someone who's around, you guys are clearly around and yours all the time. You can see the impact end to end. And I, ours is the same way. Jen's that for us, our founder. And, you know, somebody's, somebody's got to take the complaints. It's not going to be me. That's what I always say. You know, so. just like an anonymous mm-hmm. box somewhere. You got to oh. listen to people bitching. I couldn't do it. I just point them toward Jen. She, she takes complaints. I take, I take sarcasm, snide remarks, uh, <laughs> jokes. You can do dumb stuff and let me video it. That's that was going to say hilarious photos. You can turn into memes. Yeah. Otherwise complaints go to Jen. That's great. We're, That's we're great. fortunate enough also that we've got like, we've got really great coaches and having coaches that are actually interested in coaching makes a huge sure. difference. And not coaches who are there because it provides them an opportunity to compete or it buying them time until they do something else, which is kind of filling a position um, makes a really big difference. And it begins that community thing. So I think they can feel that also. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think he's stumble a lot. I think he's exactly right. Like you can stumble on a lot of people that think like, because I coach means I get to work out all day long. It's like, that's not how it works. Like, yes, you'll have access, but like coaching and competing need to be viewed as two completely separate things. And we've always viewed them that way. And so where our coaches always view them that way. And I think that's just an important piece is you get a lot of people who are athletes that I think they think that coaching will maybe foster that. But to us, it needs to be two very separate things Um, because the 55 year old in your class, it, just because you're good at this, if you're not able to help and coach her, then she's not really getting a whole lot out of that. And so I think it's just being able to separate, separate those two. Like you can be a great athlete and inspire and motivate, but you also need to be able to understand like wearing your coach hat and how to help people. And that's something mm, that's really important. Sure. Being, being a good athlete has no connection to being yeah. a good coach. And Agreed. there's no shortage of people who could care less about your competing. Like I want to work out and I want to not get hurt. And I want to do things correctly. That's what's important to most people and why they're coming. Yeah, for sure. And vice versa. I don't think you need to be the fittest person in the world in order to be an excellent coach. I can't even tell you how many times I've coached people through muscle ups. Do not want to watch me attempt muscle ups. You know what I mean? It that is one has no bearing on the other for sure. I can tell almost anybody what they're doing wrong. Just don't watch me. Don't watch me do it myself. <laughs> That's for sure. All right. Well, uh, as we wrap up, one, one last question. Do you guys own anything that doesn't say no bull on it? Anything at all? <laughs> Hashtag sponsor. <laughs> Hashtag sponsor. You we guys look very cute. You're matching no bull. I love it. You got an Ibex hat on? Uh, yeah. yeah we, oh. we, don't own, we don't own much. Um, <laughs> and honestly, yeah, it just these things easy to be, to be yeah. honest. I don't like shopping anyway, so... Yeah, it's great. Hey, I, Athleisure we, for life, man. For for yeah. sure. We we had a guy on a couple of weeks ago. His name's Dylan, and he had, has this great weight loss journey through CrossFit. And he was head to toe noble. And so I grilled him on it. I'm like, bro, what's up with all the noble? And he's like, he doesn't even wear the shoes. He just loves the apparel. He's the first person I've met that way. Awesome. Doesn't own the shoes at all, but he loves the sweatshirts, loves the t-shirts. Well, and then. And then we had Ari, we had Ari Hurst on the show who's like, she like likes a whole bunch of different brands, but she's like, she cannot mix brands as she wears. Like she must wear one full outfit from one brand. She can't wear like, like a Reebok bra and a Noble top and, and like Um, Lululemon pants. Like she can't do it. She must. Are you the same way? I like to wear, yeah, I like to have all the same. (laughs) You mix. Um, Well, I mean, I pretty much just have, Noble, and you're he, she's he, a noble athlete. So yeah, I'm gonna have like, to. you filled my but, closet, babe. You know what I have. Yeah, yeah it's true. <laughs> so Fair. Yeah, it makes life easy. You're That's the best. It's I used exactly to. Really funny, I was gonna say it's kind of funny when we come down in the exact same clothes, exact same color. I've got tights on. He's got shorts on. We both have t-shirt. And we're like same shoes. Like who's changing? <laughs> like, we're not. One of us is gonna have to change. <laughs> this is really 
right now. <laughs> I love it. Well, thanks for joining us this week. I know you guys are crazy busy between the gym and everything else you have going on. So even, even the hour you gave us is really, we're really grateful. So thank you. Well, for fuck's Great. sake, the bug is on my can, you guys. Oh my God, the bug is back. How did it land there? I touched it with my finger. Did you see it? No. This is bullshit. Beat it to oh, the for God's sake, I touched it. Mm! Look. This is obviously Nikki's last episode because she's probably going to pass away from bug fright. Oh, there Ooh, it is. Yeah. Oh, cute. Cut this out of this episode. <laughs> no, th this is how actually I'm going to promote the episode. <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> oh, my God, you guys. That scared the shit out of me just <laughs> We had an episode once where a spider came in the room and Nikki had to go get Matt. I don't know I if did. you remember that, but it was a long time ago. We were like, I texted Matt at the start of this episode and asked him to come and collect the stink bug. And he said that it was harmless and that I needed to man up. There you go. And then it landed on my can. So. Oh, well, thank you for keeping it lively, Nikki. We appreciate it. No problem. All right. Well, Christy Paz, great seeing you guys. Thanks for joining Nikki, great seeing you. I hope you survived the night. Good luck. <laughs> Calling exterminator. And for everyone listening, we appreciate you guys joining as well. We'll chat with you guys soon.